fellow Diamond Painting Addicts and welcome back to Diamond Painting Anonymous. I'm Daphne and I'm here today for this week's Whip and Chat. If you're new here, welcome. If you're not new here, welcome back. Whip, W-I-P, stands for work in progress and this is mine. You are welcome and encouraged to go grab whatever you are working on and work alongside while I chat or alternatively you can treat this as a podcast and just listen while I chat. Let me apologize in advance because today may be a huge ramble my brain is so full of so many things. I've made notes to try and get it down in some kind of coherent order, but I don't know that it's going to stay that way. So let me move things around a bit. Let me zoom in where I'm going to be working and I will be right back. Don't go anywhere. All right, let me get my timer started here. Let me get some drills poured and then I can jump into my life update, which honestly, is kind of boring while also being simultaneously crazy. <laughs> so it was kind of a boring week, not a whole lot of things going on. I cleaned house, I did laundry, all that kind of stuff. So nothing super duper interesting. Um, the youngest is officially halfway through what we hope will be his last semester. He is so ready to be done, and I can't say that I blame him. The class that he's in where they're having to do this big group project, he is so frustrated with. So I think I mentioned to you guys before that it turns out that one of the people in their group is actually in Brazil, which is fine. It's an online class, but what they decided to do for their service project was to uh, get donations for the food bank and make donations for the food bank and they have to do all of this stuff For the project. There's a presentation at the end of it. They each had well, they set a goal and then they each had to do their part of it and They had a meeting with their instructor During this last week to kind of go over everything and see where they're at and make sure they're on schedule and on track for everything and all that good stuff they find out from the instructor that this guy in Brazil has missed several quizzes and other assignments. So he's currently failing the class. And then they're all super annoyed because he has told them that he's completed all of these things. So he's been lying to them. And then these, like we went last week and he dropped off his donations to the food bank and we had to get photos and all that good stuff. Then we find out from the instructor, they find out from the instructor that he tells them Brazil does not have food banks and they don't have like food donations. They do what they call care packages. So he did one of those, but I guess, I, I don't know the details. I don't know if he really didn't do it or if the instructor said what he was doing didn't qualify or he didn't have enough documentation. I don't know. But basically I think the instructor has told them that they probably need to oust this guy from the group because he's not, doing all the things. And I'm like, well, if he's failing the class, why is it up to you guys to oust him? He's failing the class. I mean, I guess he can stay in the class until he gets done, but I guess they have to oust him from the group so that his grades don't affect theirs. But I mean, again, I would think that that would be something the instructor could do without them having to go through the whole rigmarole of officially booting this guy. And then once they officially boot him, they still have to keep all of their goals from the project, which means whatever it was that he was supposed to be doing is now going to get split between whoever's left, which means they all have to now do more work and go back to redo some things they all thought they were done with, which is annoying to many of them. And I told my son, just jump through the hoops and get done. I, I, I'm so sick of this class at this point. I'm not even the one taking it. It seems dumb in so many ways. I don't know what this is teaching them other than to hate group projects. So he's officially frustrated and ready to be done. I'm ready for him to be done because so much of what they're doing just seems pointless. I mean, maybe I'm just not grasping the point of it, but it seems pointless. Also, just an aside, this is, I guess I didn't tell you guys that, this is universe in a jar. I finished my bubble fairies. So I'm working on this one. This is the one that I kitted up by symbol. And let me tell you, I confused the heck out of myself when I started this one. I guess I'll save that for more when I get into diamond painting stuff. Okay, back to my regular life. 
Son is frustrated, I'm frustrated, want him to be done with school. My oldest has been officially diagnosed with carpal tunnel. She's been drawing a lot and her hand has started going numb. So she went to the doctor and they've diagnosed her with carpal tunnel. So she's been told to wear a wrist brace, take pain meds, lay off drawing stuff for a while, just to give it a rest so that it can kind of heal up. And I said, well, at least you don't, she, they didn't give her any like corticosteroid shots or anything. The first time I was diagnosed with carpal tunnel, I ended up having to have shots in my shoulder. So I'm glad at least she didn't have to do that. And I said, well, what did she give you in the way of stretches? And she's like, well, they didn't give me anything. And I'm like, well, let me dig out my old stuff because there's definitely some stretches and things you can do before you start drawing and things that will help release some of that tension so that you can do some of that stuff without pain. I mean, I remember when I went in, even though he was giving me a steroid shot, he's like, here's some, I mean, he gave me a whole handout of stretches for my hands and wrists and things that I could do that would help mitigate. I don't do them as much as I should, but I honestly don't have as much trouble with my carpal tunnel as I used to because I'm not doing things like I used to. I don't write as much as I used to. Like you would think that diamond painting and holding a pen like this would aggravate my carpal tunnel, but it doesn't usually. If I if I do it for too long, if I do like a big session of diamond painting or something, then I can aggravate it, but it's usually not too bad. I've tried to make my setup as ergonomic for me as I can get it. So, so she's been struggling with that. Hubby was back at work. I gotta say again, I am quickly growing tired of him being gone all week. I mean, he comes home and he's home three days a week, but it just goes by so fast. And then he's back at work. I'm still not back on a regular, regular sleep schedule. I can't seem to work that out or I've had insomnia really bad the last week. There were two days this last week where even though I went to bed at a decent time and I tried to go to sleep, I just laid there and could not fall asleep. And I mean, I wasn't even really, it's not like my brain was working overtime like it usually does when I can't sleep. I, lit I literally just couldn't sleep. So, I mean, maybe somewhere in the back of my brain, but I didn't have anything currently occupying my mind so I'm not quite sure why I couldn't get to sleep but anyway he was back at work they did actually get most of Monday off because where he was they got an inch or so of snow so Monday basically like I think Monday at 11 o'clock or so they got off work which he appreciated but he's not at home so then he's stuck in a motel room because <laughs> he realized after they sent them all home that he did not have a scraper in his car so he ended up driving around to a couple places to see if he could find a scraper he never did find a scraper but he did find something that he could use to scrape off his car so he did that but yeah it's just this is not how I want to live my life with him so we have been talking and trying to make plans for our move and somebody suggested if we actually set a date maybe that would spur things forward. We've set a tentative date. I don't know if we'll make it or not. There's just so many things involved in us moving. That seems crazy. I think I said this last week. There's so many dominoes and we need to figure out where, which one is the first one that kind of needs to fall so that we can figure everything else out. So, so many things that we need to consider how to get our goods across and all of that. Now we have said that we're not going to take our entire household. However, after making a list, we're actually going to be taking more than I had considered. So then we were looking at, because there's some rule about we can import stuff for free, but there are some rules on how long you have to have owned it and all that kind of stuff. And then we had people in the group that he's in on Facebook telling us we needed to put stuff in my name and it had to have been in my name for so long and all these things. Well, that's sort of true, but also not. He is also moving back, so he can import things as well. And basically what we found out is because he's been gone longer than five years, we can import basically however much we want 
as long as no individual item is over $10,000 in value. So really the only things that we're going to be moving that would be over that in value are our two vehicles. So that means we can actually take quite a bit more, fill up our trailer like we want and take quite a bit more than I was anticipating. Now I told him, I don't want to take a whole bunch of stuff because we don't know where we're gonna land. We don't know what the house that we end up in is gonna look like, what kind of furniture we're even gonna have room for. So I feel like getting rid of most of the stuff that we have is probably still the best idea, regardless of whether or not we could import it for nothing or whatever. The biggest obstacle I think beyond that is our house. We have a line on short-term rentals that we could have so that we have someplace we can land. But Hubby has also been thinking about his retirement. So he's contacted some financial people that we're gonna be meeting with to talk about what do we need to do to make this move financially smooth for us? Because there's lots of tax rules and things about retirement accounts and things in the US when you move to Canada. And we're trying to find out if it would be better to cash some of them out, even paying a penalty and just not have them or just leave them here or what we need to do. And in trying to find out <laughs> information about this, it's so crazy to me. It seems like for every rule, there's a secondary rule to it, and they all seem sort of designed to make it so it's almost impossible to withdraw your money with no penalty. So for example, for me, I have a retirement account that got started when I started teaching. And when I left that job, I basically rolled it over into like a 401k slash IRA. I don't know what the difference between those two are. I'm going to treat them like they're the same if they're not, whatever. I'm not even sure what account it is. I never look at it because I didn't intend to touch it until I retire. So I went and looked. Well, it seems like the earliest that I could cash it out with no penalty is 59 and a half. Okay. But then it says if you retire more than a year before you turn 59 and a half, you may still have to pay a penalty, which makes zero sense to me. So if I retire earlier than 59 and a half because I somehow have the ability to support myself without it, and then I turn 59 and a half thinking, okay, now I can get that money, but because I retired too long before that, now I, I'll, I still get a penalty? Like that, that's insane. And then I'm like, well, how does that work for someone like me? Because I haven't worked full time in, gosh, 10 years. I mean, I've had part-time jobs, but not full-time jobs and nothing that I was putting towards retirement. So how do I know when I officially retire? Because I don't have a job to retire from. So lots of questions about how all of that works. And my situation is a little more complicated. I have a couple of retirement accounts of my dad's from when my dad passed away. And I can't cash them out without a penalty, but I have to, to take a certain amount. They're required to distribute a certain amount to me each year from it because he's no longer alive, but I can't cash it out until I, yeah. See, the whole thing just seems nuts. So, and then there's the matter of how do we get our money from the United States into Canada. Like I think we just do like a bank transfer, but I don't know what kind of fees that incurs and all that kind of stuff. So lots of dominoes, lots of questions. It, it just, yeah, it, it's really daunting right now. And the thing for me is I think I'm not a very patient person. I have all these questions that I want the answer to now and I can't get them. So like my husband called about his retirement through his employer plan which I, it's called an annuity pension. I thought those were two different things, so who knows? Anyway, he's contacted the advisors that are recommended. They've said they'll get back with him because they actually seem kind of excited because this is a situation they've never dealt with before because he wants to retire, but then we're gonna be moving back to Canada. How does that all work? How do we set this up to be beneficial for us once we move back to Canada or move to Canada in my case, back in his case? And then where does that leave us? So yeah, just lots of questions. And of course, we still have lots of questions about the house and everything. We have to wait until we find out about his retirement, because if we can take out his retirement, then we could maybe buy a house while we're still here, 
know where we're going to end up up there, get ready to move, put our house on the market, knowing that we have someplace to go immediately once our house sells. If we can't do that, then there's lots of other things we need to think about, like where are we going to land when we're up there? How long are we going to have to be someplace before we can get something, you know, a house up there? Yeah, like I said, just lots of dominoes and we don't really know where the first one starts. I think we've decided the first one is figuring out his retirement and whether or not we can do that because then that will inform our options for everything else. We were in fact looking at a trailer today because I feel like for us, for selling the house, that's the first step for us is to get the trailer so that we can start packing things up and start loading some things in the trailer. Now, I don't know if we're actually gonna load things into the trailer yet because I don't want everything, like we're getting ready to go into summer, it gets over 100 degrees here. I don't know that I'm gonna want a bunch of our possessions, one, sitting out in the driveway in a trailer, and two, sitting out in the driveway in a trailer when it's 110 degrees outside. I mean, for some things it wouldn't make any difference for furniture and that kind of thing. So those kind of things we might pack up, but for like books and of course my diamond painting stuff and pictures and electronics and those kinds of things, obviously we don't want setting out in that kind of heat. I think we've also decided that we're just going to paint the house and then give everything else a good cleaning, like steam clean the carpets, clean the wood floors where we have wood floors really well, that kind of thing. But I think most of it, I just know the house will sell faster the emptier it is. And we're gonna be getting rid of some furniture. Some I think we may give to my daughter. I think she thinks she's gonna end up with more than she actually is just because I think a lot of what she wants is just not gonna fit well in her apartment. Like I said, lots of unknowns and, and things for us to figure out and that first domino has to kind of fall. We have set a tentative date and because I, I told my husband, we're just gonna keep putting it off and putting it off and putting it off if we do that because if we don't set a date because we are already at it's been almost a year since we got our permanent residency approved which seems insane to think about I mean it seems like just yesterday we were sweating bullets over getting everything filled out and getting my passport renewed and all that kind of stuff and now it's all done and it's been a year. And I'm like, we need to just go. <laughs> I'm tired of talking about it at this point. We need to just go. But there are still things that we're gonna need to take into account besides all the money and selling our house and importing our goods. There's also paperwork we gotta do. He was looking today. I don't know why I put that away. I just missed all of those. He was looking today and there's some paperwork that we have to fill out it said three days prior to importing our vehicles. Now, I don't know if that means we can't fill it out sooner than three days. Like, can we fill it out a week ahead? And then we have to plan our cross country drive because we're going to, well, that's something we haven't really decided either. So we need the trailer so that we can bring our own goods across the border because we feel like that's gonna be easier and the cheapest. What we've been considering is maybe renting a pod Filling it up here, having it shipped to Bangor, picking it up in Bangor, loading everything into the trailer from there, and then crossing the border. Because I just feel like I'm going to have a nervous breakdown if we try to, because it's going to take us, the last time we drove up there, when we took our trip to Maine, it was a three-day trip, and that was driving 10 hours a day. So we may drive less than that hauling a trailer. I, I, we may not make as good a time, all that stuff. Plus, we'll be driving separately with my husband and his car and the trailer driving. He's going to be driving that, and then my son and I driving my car. And I just know that I'm going to be anxious about stopping and sleeping overnight at some hotel with everything we own basically shoved in the back of a trailer. Yeah, the more I think about it, maybe that's a, a good option to do it that way. Yes, we'd have to pay for the pod, but we would have the trailer. We could haul the trailer ourselves. It would just be empty, which would actually save on gas. And then we could just, once we get to Bangor, we could just go get the pod, unload it, and then go from there. And then it would be at the most maybe one day in a hotel 
with all of our stuff. Unless we could organize to get there, get it all unloaded into the trailer and then get across the border in one day, which we maybe could do depending on the timing of things. I'll have to talk to my husband about that because we hadn't really kind of fleshed that out. Lots of decisions and lots of things that kind of need to fall into place. And our, our house is kind of the big worry now. Like, how do we do this? Because if it sells before we have something in Canada, then what do we do with all of our stuff until we're ready to head that direction? Lots and lots of questions, and I don't know that we have all of the answers. I've also been kind of second guessing, I guess not second guessing, but maybe rethinking some of my goals for this year. When I started this year, my goal was based on a lot of your suggestions to build up my diamond painting stash with things that maybe would be more expensive in Canada. And I, I get it. I do. I get that now. However, as I've been increasing my stash and looking at the pile as it grows and grows, I don't know if I want to move all of them to Canada. Someone pointed out that if something has been in my stash for a year, maybe it's not something that I want to hang on to. I was actually, well, you know what? That's diamond painting stuff too, although it kind of ties in, but I'll talk about it in a minute. Okay, we're going to be moving. We have lots of things that need to happen and we need to happen them to happen in a certain order. Or, as my husband keeps hoping, we just need to win the lottery and then we can do what we want because we can afford it. <laughs> so we'll see how that works out for him. Okay, so my diamond painting life, let's get into that because I keep straying into that territory. So let me just go in order of my notes, even though I probably should jump back to what I was talking about. But anyway, okay, so I finished Bubble Fairies, which was my oldest kit. So that one is now done and I'm working on Universe in a Jar, which is my second oldest kit. That's going to leave me Jasper C and Belly Dancer. Jasper C is round, Belly Dancer is square, and then my Melody in pink, which I'm still working on, but I'm still behind on. I was watching Lizette Crafts and Tells. She was talking about things that she learned while she was doing her diamond painting detox. And I guess she decided a couple years ago that she was just going to not buy any more diamond paintings. She was going to just work through everything in her stash. I kind of followed along. I didn't watch every video, but I kind of followed along. And I think for what she wanted, it worked really well for her. Everybody is in a different situation. And like I said, I my plan had always been to increase my stash and prep for our move. However, she brought up a cu couple of really excellent points, as did people who commented on my last stay or go video. So if you haven't seen the last stay or go video, check that out. The overwhelming consensus on the stay or go video was that I should keep it. And I think I'm actually going to. But one of the things that Lizette pointed out was when you have a lot of diamond paintings, then of course some of them are quite old. And diamond painting companies are constantly making improvements. So for example, this one is old enough that it came with pre-cut stickers. But I don't think the Bubble Fairies had pre-cut stickers. Because I think the Bubble Fairies I bought in 2020 and this one I think I bought in 2021, I think. Anyway, so improvements get made. Diamond Art Club now has the perforated cover sheets. They now have all the different kinds of drills. I mean, everybody has the mica drills, whatever they call them, fairy, pixie, dust, whatever. Glow-in-the-dark drills, jelly drills, all the crystals that you can get to do enhancement with, that sort of thing. That was not available when some of these diamond paintings came out. People including cover minders and washi tape and whatever in their toolkits. None of that stuff really happened. So you miss out working on some of these older kits. Also, the drills are better. And I will say that is something I have noticed with both Bubble Fairies and this kit. Not that the drills are bad, but that the drills in the newer kits are better. Bubble Fairies was a lot of trash, a lot of trash drills. So far, I'm expecting this one to be kind of the same way. And not that I think it's anything against the diamond painting companies. I just think, like she said, as the years go on, they make improvements and things get better. So if I'm constantly working from my oldest kit to my newest kit, I'm missing out on some of the fun. Not that these are not enjoyable to work on. They are. But 
maybe they would be more enjoyable if I was spending less time picking trash out of my drills. That's sort of what started me thinking about my stash and do I really want to keep making it bigger? Do I want to just call it quits where I am and work through some of my older ones before I buy any more new ones? Do I want to just let go of some of my older ones? There are certain ones that I know I'm not going to get rid of anymore. Like I think I had a couple of craftably or at least one craftably on my list that I was thinking maybe I would put it in the letter stay or go series. But at this point with craftably being closed, I don't think I'm going to get rid of it. So I don't think it's worth putting it in that series. Something else I need to do is go through and look at how many diamond paintings I have that are squares versus rounds because I enjoy them both, but I must enjoy rounds slightly more. Or maybe I've just done more of my rounds because they go faster and that lets me finish things faster. Because what I'm finding is that 90% of my stash seems to be squares. Now, I don't know for sure if that is true. That may just be my perception of things. But I know I also have a lot of kits in my stash that are not, ooh, I must do these immediately. When I made my want series, which was another goal, I sat down with the whole list of kits and went, and just said, which ones of these do I want to do the most? And I picked out 12 of those. I had more than 12, but I picked out 12 of them. I think maybe I need to go through my stash and really look at all of them and make that decision. And then whatever is a yes, I want to do it gets put on the trailer to Canada and everything else I really have to consider, do I want to keep it? Do I want to sell it? Do I want to give it away? What do I want to do with it? I mean, I have lots of options. It's just, which ones do I want to take? I would have sworn there was another K. Oh, there it is right there. Because like I said, she did bring up some good points about I'm, I'm missing out on some of the new stuff because I'm still trying to work through all of my old stuff. Now, this is all purely personal. If I want to keep the whole stash, then that's what I'm going to do. I don't know if that's what I'm going to do yet. I think some of it will be us loading up the trailer or the pod, whatever we decide to do, and seeing how much room there is and making some decisions about not only how much diamond painting stuff I'm taking, but how much of the rest of our house I'm taking. Because if there are some hard decisions to be made, there are definitely things that I'm going to choose to keep over diamond paintings. I mean, we have photo albums and decorations and family heirlooms that are not worth a bunch of money, but that are mean something to me that I would rather, yeah, I'm going to take that over a diamond painting or whatever. So lots of things for me to think about. And that's one of the reasons I want to start packing up the house, because as we start packing up, one, we'll see how many things we're accumulating, how many boxes of stuff. And then two, we can be like, well, does this really need to go? Or maybe we need to rethink all of this. So decisions have to get made and I'm going to have to be the one that makes them because my husband is a pack rat and he won't. He'll just be like, well, we can take everything. And while we could, I don't want to. I mean, part of this is that we're going to be hopefully downsizing into a smaller house. What, what I really would like to find is a house where my husband and I are one, on one floor and there's a separate apartment-like area for my son. And then he can live with us until he's ready to get out on his own. And then once he's ready to get out, if my daughter's ready to move up, we have a place for her to stay. Or if she doesn't still want to move up with us, then we've got something we can rent out to help us with expenses and things. My husband and I are really lucky that we have so many options and and I understand that. Picking through the options has always been hard for me. I've mentioned many times before decision fatigue is a thing for me. I think that's kind of why I'm so impatient and I want to know the answers to everything because I feel like knowing that will help me make decisions because I do get decision fatigue and eventually I'll just get to a point where I'm like I don't care I'm not I'm not even going to think about it we're just going to do this. And I do want to be mindful about what we're doing and everything. So that's kind of how I feel about my stash and why. Not quite sure what, what I'm going to do yet. I do have a stash 
video that I was going to make because I try to do one every quarter so at the beginning of April I should do another stash video. So you guys let me know in the comments below what you think. What I typically do is move everything onto my dining room table and then I throw up pictures of all of the different diamond paintings. This time I'm wondering if maybe I just put the pictures of the diamond paintings on the screen while I'm talking rather than actually showing you guys the whole giant stash on the table. Is that as interesting as seeing all of them piled up together? Yeah, I just don't know what I want to do. I mean, maybe that would help me sort through them as well if I actually physically had to move them. So I don't know. You guys leave me a comment down below with your thoughts. See the stash on the dining room table as I go through it or you're fine with just seeing the pictures. I mean, it, you're just looking at boxes anyway. Other than seeing all the boxes together, I don't know what value that has necessarily that I'm moving them other than I get some exercise. <laughs> but that's not a value to you guys. So yeah, leave me a comment. Let me know about that. Okay. So after talking about my stash, I finished Bubble Fairies. I'm working on Universe in a Jar. I'm still working on the J Wall. I did manage to finish something else. So I actually have a couple of finishes for the month of March, which I was afraid I was not going to have anything. So I'm glad that I finished the Bubble Fairies. And I thought this one was the same size, but I actually think this one is a little bit smaller than Bubble Fairies. So hopefully it will go a little bit faster. Although this one may be more confetti, so I don't know, we'll see. Anyway, so I'm working on this one, still working on the J-Wall. I did not, for March, I did not do a diamond painting from my Want series, which means that's gonna put me behind. So in April, I need to do two of those. So I think what I'm going to do is go through the Want series and figure out what the smallest ones are maybe and pick those two to do in April to get myself caught back up. This is all dependent on all the other things going on with our house as well. So yeah, everything's kind of up in the air. So I can only make so many plans. But anyway, that's my plan at the moment is to pick out maybe two of the smaller ones and do those. I also need to start thinking about DP for pets and getting ready for that because that's going to be here before I know it. I've got most things ready to go, but I haven't done a lot of like social media posting about it. So I need to get that out there so that everybody can start making their plans. So I'll be doing that here shortly. Decisions, decisions, decisions. I think I'm just going to have to make myself a list in like two decisions a day and limit myself so that I don't get overwhelmed. I just know that after Bubble Fairies and Harajuku, I mean, I sat down and figured it out and I think I've actually done four squares to three rounds, but it just feels like the squares take so much more time that I'm kind of getting squared out, which is probably why squares is all I have left in my stash. But anyway, this is what I'm working on now. We'll see what happens in April. What else is going on in diamond painting world? Uh, did you guys see that Joann's filed for bankruptcy? Now, I find this interesting. So they've filed for bankruptcy. They've said the stores are still going to be open there, but they're going to be doing some reorganizing, which I'm assuming means some people are going to lose their jobs because that's always what it means, right? But they also said they're going to go back to being a private company rather than being a publicly traded one. If you're not publicly traded, there's lots of things, lots of options you have that you don't if you're publicly traded. I mean, that's true the other way around too, but anyway. So they're going back to be public, a private company instead of being on the stock market. The stores are gonna stay open, but they're gonna reorganize, whatever that means. So at least I guess the stores are gonna stay open because I would like to have them be open so that I could shop there. I mean, we were literally looking at what kind of craft stores were available to us in Bangor so that if we wanted to go to a craft store, a Michael's, a Hobby Lobby, a Joann's, which Bangor has all three of those, then we could hop across the border on a long weekend, do some craft shopping and take it all back with us. But we'll see what happens. Just because, yes, there are Michaels in Canada, but Michaels is not like, I don't think, I don't know if every Michaels is doing this, but like my Michaels, at least our local, the ones that are closest to me, they're not carrying diamond dot stuff anymore because Michaels has their own make market stuff. So my local store doesn't carry any diamond dots anymore. So if I want any diamond dots stuff, especially the ABs or anything like that, I have to go to Joann's and get it. 
I haven't checked online to see what the online ordering situation is, but speaking of Joann's, someone had told me that when I did my poured or my double-sided tape to poured glue conversion, that the Diamond Dots glue was like half the price I paid because I ended up buying mine off of Amazon because I couldn't find it locally. That there are craft stores that sell it for like half of what I paid for it, in which case that would be the glue that I recommend because it would be the, the cheapest. And a report back after, I think it's been two or three weeks now, all of the glue, now I've got a cover sheet over it, but all of the glue is still sticky except for the tacky glue, the one that did not work. But all the other ones, the tacket over and over, the diamonds dot stick, whatever they call it, and the diamond article blue are all still sticky. And that's only with one coat of glue. So if I put on more glue. Also, someone commented that you can put the poured glue directly over the double-sided adhesive, which makes it easier that you don't have to remove the double-sided adhesive but if you're trying to do that because you have like rivers and stuff and issues with the diamond double-sided adhesive I don't know that that actually helps but just FYI for any of you who are curious apparently it works to do it that way if you wanted to try it. I have a different project in mind. I was actually talking to my daughter the last time she was over last week and was showing her that I want to do a conversion. Well, I want to do a conversion. I don't know if you can call it a conversion. I'm not taking, I'm not doing like a cross stitch to diamond painting. You can do that. That's fairly simple. It's not a hard process. What I want to do is do my own diamond painting, sort of like a custom, but do it myself. Well, that's not exactly true either. Cause like I wouldn't be printing it on a canvas. I would be getting a blank canvas and then doing it but I wanted like an original piece of art so she gave me a piece of her art so one of the videos that I'm planning and working on is going to be making me taking her piece of art transforming that into a diamond painting chart getting a blank canvas gathering all the drills and then doing the diamond painting because I think that will be interesting because I'm sure I'm biased but I love her art and so she gave me this really cute one, and so I'm going to be doing that with it. So that's a project that you guys will probably see somewhere down the road. Okay, I got a little bit off track. So I talked about Joann's. The other thing that I saw, I don't know if you guys saw this week, is that Diamond Art Club is now, they've changed their tips that they sell. If any of you weren't aware, this is a Diamond Art Club tip. The ones that look like this are all Diamond Art Clubs. But everyone's complaint has been about these, that they don't fit in pins well, that you have to washi tape them or glue them or do something to them because they just are too small for pins. They fall right out. So what they have done now, I guess, is they are going to make them screw tips. So the ends of them will have threads on them and you get a pen that will let you screw it in. And of course, they're going to be selling those pens. My thing with that is I don't like the pins that Diamond Art Club sells. I have a lot of my own custom pins already, and my custom pins are not going to be ones that have threads in them. So I don't know if that's something that custom pin makers are now going to start to offer. I don't know if Diamond Art Club is just trying to take over the accessory market as well and kind of make themselves a one-stop shopping place for everything. Because not only are they selling the new tips, the new pens to go with those tips. Um, but now they're also selling, I think, scented putty. I just put all those in the wrong place. You guys, why do I let my brain do that? All right, I think these are the only ones that I had placed that, at least I catch it early, I guess, before I've done a whole bunch of these. Where was I? Oh, so they're selling the pens, the, now the screw, screw in tips with the pins that take the screw in tips they're selling the scented putty so I thought well are they going to start selling release papers cover papers are they going to start selling cover minders like where does it end I don't know if it does and there is something to be said to becoming like a one-stop shopping place for that I'm sure there'll be people who well there's already people who that's the only place they shop I like a little more variety than that so Plus, like I said, I already own a ton of custom pins. I don't want to just never use them again because 
now all I can get are screw in tips. Although that does answer a question for me about why the lady that makes the everlasting tips had asked on her Instagram if anybody was interested in her making tips with threads so that they could screw into a pin. And from the answers I saw, the overwhelming answer was no, because we all own custom pens that that wouldn't work with. Huh, I wonder if Diamond Art Club would get into making trays as well. Lots of opportunities. That would be interesting to see. Anyway, there's room for everybody. Everybody likes something different, right? There's people who will only buy Diamond Art Club kits. There's people who will only buy Dreamer Design kits. There's people who will only buy from whatever company. It also depends on where you are. So maybe that's something I should consider too. Like I'm not going to be here forever. So <laughs> who knows what's going to happen? What else did I need to tell you guys? Actually, I think I've jumped around so much that I covered everything that I wanted to cover. So I finished Bubble Fairies, like I said. I finished another small 30 by 40 butterfly. So I've got two finishes for March. I need to do a stash update. I need to do a goals update to see how I did in March because I ended up buying a few more kits that I had anticipated. Yeah, lots to do. I definitely need to get myself back on a schedule. I'm really gonna try this week to get my sleep schedule back to where it was. I don't know if that's going to happen, but I'm gonna try. Okay, let me zoom out here so you can see what I got done, which admittedly was not a ton, but you can see here I've made a start. You can see the bottom of one jar here. This one is one that's filled with like all the little planets and everything. So this one is a lot of confetti, but I'm starting to get, there's a little draggling right here in this area. And I think there's another one up here. So hopefully once I get the first row done, then we'll see where I'm at. I think this is actually smaller than Bubble Fairies, or maybe it's just the orientation. No, I think it's still smaller. Anyway, I'm gonna shut up now <laughs> because I think I've shared everything that I needed to share. Again, I apologize for the ramble. Don't forget to let me know in the comments below about whether just showing pictures of my stash is sufficient or whether you guys would like to see the whole giant pile because I'm kind of scared to move it actually. I bought so many since the last time I did a stash update, which seems kind of crazy, but I also haven't finished as many as I normally would. So I think that's part of it too. Maybe I will move them just, even if I don't show you guys me moving them, I need to at least go through them and do what I said and pick out ones that I absolutely want. Those go back on a, a shelf. And then ones that I got to think about go on a different shelf, maybe. We'll see. All right. I really am going to shut up now. That's it for me today, guys. Thanks so much for sticking around till the end of the video. Before you leave, don't forget to do all the things. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And hit that bell notification icon so that you can be informed of future uploads. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching.